In this lesson, we'll learn how to make basic transformations inside a sketchbook designer. Okay, so this is the Lesson 14 Begin file. If you want to follow along, feel free. So, um, at this point, we have looked at pixel-based artwork. We've looked at uh, vector-based artwork. But there's one tool that really pertains to both types of artwork here inside a sketchbook designer. And really, it's one set of tools. It's these three tools right over here. Notice here that I have a paint layer currently selected. I have this a layer that our character is on, actually. And if I come over here and I select maybe this particular layer, let me hide the character. You can see I've got our shoe here as well. So I'm going to just select this base layer here. This is a vector layer, and these same three tools exist on this vector layer. Now, not only do they exist on vector and paint layers, but if we came up here and selected the folder for character, those are the only three tools that exist in the toolbar for the folder. So um, these are transformation tools. On the left, we have our scale tool. On the right, we have, or rather in the middle, we have our distort tool. And then on the right, we have our warp tool. So these three different types of transformations can be made at the layer level or at the folder level here inside a sketchbook designer. So um, let me go ahead and show you what that means. So let's come over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the shoe layer here, or rather shoe folder. And let's go ahead and grab the scale tool here. Now as soon as I do, you're going to notice a bounding box appears around our shoe. And this bounding box has a, a plethora of different controls around it. So um, we can begin the scale transformation by starting at one of the corners here. You'll notice if I mouse over them, they highlight orange. So let's go ahead and scale that down. Now, you can see here this isn't necessarily scaling uniformly. We can actually squish and stretch this while we're scaling it. So um, let me go ahead and undo that here. We're going to set that back to the way it normally is. And if we kind of mouse on these areas between those corners, we can actually come in here and start to squish it just like so. Or we could uh, do it on the other axes up here. So I want to undo back a couple times. We have all these controls in the center that all do a little something different. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is moving the selected artwork. So we can do that by either mousing over these little arrows that correspond to our axes and just dragging on one set of arrows or the other. Or we can mouse over the center until we get this little four-headed arrow over our cursor like so, and we can kind of have a free move type ability here. So uh, not constrained to either one of the axes, axes there. So uh, let's go ahead and undo that. Now, the next thing we can do here is we can flip the artwork. We can flip it on either the X or the Y axes. So um, you can see here we can flip it there or we can flip it here. Now these little ticks to the outside of these arrows are basically going to squish or stretch the artwork on that axis. So uh, very similar to grabbing the little blue outline, we can stretch or squish the artwork that way as well. Now the little control right down here, if we mouse over that, my cursor turns into this curved arrow. And that should tell you that this is going to allow us to begin to rotate the artwork. And you can see we're rotating all of the layers inside this folder. And the last little control here is to scale. Now this is to scale uniformly. You can see here there are two arrows indicating both axes. So basically we're going to scale this up uniformly or down uniformly. And uh, it's doing it based on the center here. Now if we begin to scale from one of the corners here, it's going to use the opposite corner as a pivot. So um, you can see here how it gets closer to that opposite corner if we scale there. And the same goes if we scale here. All right, great. Now in order to, uh, let's just go ahead and make some changes here. I'm going to go ahead and squish this in a little bit, maybe scale it down, and maybe rotate it a little bit as well. Now when we come over here and click on, say, another layer, for example, click on maybe the shadow layer, you can see here that the transformation was taken. And uh, we can actually come in here and make changes to individual layers as well if we need to. So that is the scale tool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the distort tool next. I'm going to go ahead and bring our character back here. Now this character exists on a paint layer. So um, let's talk about the distort tool. The distort tool is right here next to uh, the scale tool. It's in the center. And the bounding box is going to look very much the same. So let me just zoom out a little bit here. And you'll notice here that we have the same controls on the inside. We can move our artwork 
based on the axes here. We can kind of mouse over it and move the artwork in whichever direction we so chose, like so. We can begin to stretch the artwork on either one of the axes, just like so. And we can also rotate and we can scale. So the one thing we can do here with the distort tool that we can't do with the scale tool is relates to these corner points in our bounding box. So with these we can begin to take our artwork here just like so and we can begin to distort it. Now this is something that might be something you would do if you were trying to create the look of perspective on some artwork that you had created. Um, in this case, maybe we want to give this kind of a, a worm's eye view. So we'll just kind of stretch out like that, uh, making it look like we're kind of looking up at this character. So uh, this distort tool is a really great way to transform your artwork to imply perspective. So um, I'm actually going to hit the escape key to escape out of that transformation. Uh, that way we can demonstrate the warp tool here next. Now the warp tool is right next to the distort tool. It's right here. And again, either one of the, any one of these transformations we can make at the layer level, the folder level, um, whichever we desire. So uh, let's come over here and now again we should kind of be familiar with these widgets in the center here for moving, pinching, stretching, scaling, rotating, the things of that nature. We have those all here again with the warp tool. But the one really cool addition that the warp tool gives us is not only can we begin to move these corner points in, uh, independently of one another, but we can also come in here on these blue lines between the corners and we can begin to add additional control points. So if I click there, um, you can see I've added another control point. So essentially what we're looking at here is kind of a vector bounding box that we're able to come in and begin to add control points as needed. Maybe we want to push this one in here and we want to add one there and begin to pull out. we can really begin to just totally transform this character. Now again, just as with our curves, we can come in here if we decide, oh, well, I don't need that particular point. We can come in and hit this little X right here next to the point. So uh, maybe we don't want that one and it goes away. So um, again, this is the warp tool here. It's uh, again really great for almost creating almost a very liquid like effect with your artwork here. Um, using essentially these control points to come in and position over your bounding box and then achieve exactly the look you're going for. And again, with uh, as with the other transformation tools, we can always hit the escape key if we want to escape out of this transformation. All right, great. So in this lesson, we've learned about the different transformation tools here inside of Sketchbook Designer. Feel free to experiment with these a little bit in between lessons. But in the next lesson, we're going to move forward and we're going to learn about working with paint masks.